Okay, so welcome everyone to, to this session. We are going to go more practical based on what we have done so far. A data set was sent to the group, which I believe everyone have opened it. So start with that data set that we have to see how, what we can do on understanding parameters, understanding calculated field, which we practice what I could just say the theoretical aspects during our last meetings. So like I said, the that very Excel file, which was sent, if you have noticed, if you try to use Microsoft Excel to connect to it, I'm not sure it's going to open up. The reason is because it is a CSV file and CSV files falls under the category of text file. So all you have to do is to open your Tableau, click on that very data source. In this case, it is this one, which is the text file here. So I'm just going to click on text file. Then I go to my system to look for it. The title was Practice Dataset Tableau Class. I'm just going to select it and click open. look down here you'll see we have sheet one click on it it's like some persons wants to join this class just a minute let me check all right okay so i believe everyone knows how to how we got here sashera good evening sir Mrs. Ugoma, uh, Mrs. Vivian. Well, I Good was, sir. Okay, so I believe you all know how to open a file on Tableau. I believe everyone knows how to do that, so we can move up. Are you all? Is your system also on? Let me know, please. How many of us? Are How many of us are sitting? Good evening, sir. My is on. Okay, do you have the data? Okay, do you have the data set? Yes. All right, that's one person. All right, that's one person. So I know I take the class. Have you gotten to this point for those whose systems are open? Sir, are they tired, sir? I don't know. If your system is open, have you gotten to this screen? No, no, I don't have light in no. my area. My system is open. My gone. system is open. Okay, sir David, your own is open. Are you here? Yes, sir. Yes, right. sir. Okay, so for those whose system is not on, no problem. Why those whose own is on will all flow together, everyone. Now, I remember saying last time that in Tableau, there is something we call parameters, and we have looked into it, though it was not really taken because we didn't have some data set to practice. And thank God, in today's session, we have made some data set available. Um, sorry for the late timing. I'm just um, returning, not quite long. Now, when it comes to software, some of you have used softwares before, who know some software programs and all of that. There's what we call user-defined field. User-defined field is just a field provided in a software or a system well, where you are allowed as an end user to be able to create maybe an additional field, an additional information you might need. For instance, in most systems, um, 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 there might not be room for, you know, creating certain aspects that could give you more insight on your data and all of that. So here in Tableau, Tableau provides what we call parameter because in as much as analysis is involved, this aspect of insights, you being able to provide more valuable um, insights to your data and all of that, depending on the context it might be. And sorry, I'm letting some persons in. So that's the reason why it 
learn it, you then channel it to what you can do. So they are just user-defined fields that will allow you as an end user to be able to control certain aspects of your visualization. You know, this is a visualization tool. So um, it's very important you get to see how this works in, you know, what I could call real time. Okay. Then we'll see how we can tailor it also to see what we can actually do. Okay. Now we have a data set here before us. Now let's um, assume that you are given this data set by a company. And the company is telling you that they want you to show them in a scale. They are, um, let's say, they want you to show them in a scale their, their best product, their best 10 products, for example, their best 15 products, their best 20 products, their best 5 products, and all of that. First, you know the method of dragging into the column shelf and the row shelf. So if we are coming here and we are saying that we want to drag our product name and say, oh, where should we keep our product name? So we want to keep it under the rows shelf like this. We can see that it brings and provides all the products that we have. Okay, all the products that we have are here. Of course, first thing I would always want you to do, come to where we have sheet one, double click on it. It brings this text box, change it, just clear what you have there and write in something. So we could say um, this should be um, product ranking or product performance. So we can say product performance. Product performance, you want to bold it, you can just highlight, you see bold, you increase your fonts here, you can also change the fonts type, there are several fonts types here, the Times New Roman and all of that. You can also see where we have some color stuff, which you can also use to, um, you know, make it more presentable. So we could use a blue, depending on how you want it to be, you can also insert all that stuff here so once you are done always click apply before you click ok so that's the principle so these are product performance we could say by sales so let's say product performance by sales so let it be uniformed we're also going to change the text um, type these are area black. Centralize if you want. Oh, so sorry. All right. Okay. So this is our product performance by sales. Okay. Now, the company or your client is um, asking you, please, can you do something for us on analysis of this product? For instance, can we see the best performing product or the highest ranking product? or the lowest ranking product or the least performing product. Why do they want this? It's because they want you to evaluate and compare product based on various criteria or metrics. We'll look at one metrics in tonight's class. Metrics number one we'll be looking at is a metrics for sales. There are several metrics which we could refer to as data points also coming into those aspects. For instance, metrics like profit is also another year. But we'll be looking at sales. They want you to um, um, evaluate this, compare their products based on a metrics for sales. Now, what do you do? Now, the fact that you know how to work here doesn't mean you will just come and then drag product name into the roast chef. Then you now move and look for sales and then drag sales into columns. If I bring sales into columns chef, you can see the way it's being displayed. You can see the way it's being displayed. Of course, we know visually those with long bars means it's high sales. But this is somehow not okay because the goal is for you to either show them the top 15 products, let's say the highest ranking 15 products, what we could call best performing 15 products. At the same time, they might also be interested in, um, through your visualization 
you letting them know the um, lowest ranking or least performing product also within such scale now what you have to do this is where parameters comes in remember what we did on parameter during last time so this is where parameter comes in because um for such kind of analysis you will need um, um you need to um, create something that will give you that interaction okay so each time you want to explore because that calls for data exploration they are telling you okay show us the top or the best 15 show us the least 15 that's exploring you're not trying to explore and analyze the data or on your own or it could also be on their own now it also calls for flexibility because of switching switching you can now easily switch between you know different scenarios without even creating visuals so one good thing about parameters is that when you're using parameters to work here you don't need to create as many visuals you don't need it we'll see how that works here that we just use just the parameter control button to analyze this for them without creating many visuals you know graphs and charts and all of that yeah okay so what do you do what do you do now the first thing you're going to do the first thing you're going to do which i normally do is this i will come here for this 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 sum of sales even that is here uh, let's take it here let's just keep it here you can also keep it here now when, if, when i dragged it and kept it under the max shelf you notice it's showing a b c a b c i don't know if all you all can still hear and see my screen it's showing a b c a b c so, yes, sir. all right so look by the side there is a button by the side of that some sales you will see some buttons by the side click on it when you click on it it shows you color shows you text shows you size shows you tilt tip choose text when you choose text you now notice what it brings out the exact sales amount each of these items have actually done what generated so you can see that very information is over there now we want to um, um, help this company you know analyze and um, evaluate this product for them to show them the highest ranking products okay and also the best performing products so what do we do what i normally do is i will come over here to the rose chef and that's what you need to do come to the rose chef because the main area of focus is the products and we have been given names of those products so come to the rose chef you will see this filter icon by the side click on it so if you don't want to click on that icon you can just right click if you right click it's still the same options it shows you or you click on that icon by the time you do that it shows you this list of options all you have to do is to click on this first option called filter everyone can see this option called filter so you click on that option called filter now the moment you click on that option called filter what do you notice it brings us a new box a new box pops up containing four different options the first we have called the um, the general the second we have called the um, um the wheel card the third we have called the condition and the fourth we have called the top So I would like to ask a question so the class can be more interactive. What do we think um, the general will do for us here? Can anyone just say something? Like, it will help us to it by the uh, I don't know how to put it, but if we have multiple uh, items, just like we have a cubic foot, and we have cubic foot in many uh, options, and we have organizer, if we just summarize it to, to, to like, summarize everything together. Okay, so what do you call this word? 
you have something like this. So can you just pronounce this word as an analyst? Hello? Mrs. Tessie, are you there? Tessie, are you there? Okay, what, 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 what I want you... Yeah, what I just... Um, concerning pronounce, pronouncing this word is called general theta. Do you understand? Not just general. General filter. Wheel cut. Okay. Condition filter. Top filter. Do you understand? So just like you said, the general filter is just like saying, it's just a kind of I'm sending a message to the back end, telling table, please show me data only for certain um, areas. Do you understand? It might be that in your data sets, you might have different countries, you might have information for different location, you know, different categories and all of that. And um, you want Tableau to show you data only for a particular area, a particular aspect, like trying to tell Tableau, please exclude this from this for me, or even all, do you understand? Or even use all for me. That's what the general filter does. If I'm coming here and I'm clicking on select from list, what do you see? You saw that it brought out all those items, is that not? It brought out all the items we have. Hope we are following. I don't know if every other person can hear me. It brought it out. I want you to understand this thing. This brought it out. Okay. Now, if you also move to this other extent, you are now value list. Custom value list. Sorry, someone wants to join. Someone wants to join the class. Okay, sad. Thanks for the data. We respond to you after the class. All right, so we have custom value list, okay? We have use all. All of these together are just telling table, please show me data only for certain areas, only for certain areas. That's just what it does. It's just like um, if there's a filter, which where we are, the general is now a broad filter that allows you to like include or exclude entire areas or categories or aspects of your data. So don't forget that. I will give you a case. For example, you know this. Now, for example, let's say um, you are analyzing a sales data. You are analyzing a sales. This general filter will help you focus on specific markets, specific markets, specific markets. It will help you do that. For instance, might be in our data set we are given data for. Um, different markets, I am Alaba markets, Osho the market, and so on for a business. Okay, and once Tableau to show us sales data for Alaba, sales data only, sales data for Osho the only, it's the general filter that will do that for us. How? If I click select from list, I now have the right to choose. That means what I should have here will not be product, it will just be data for mark for each of the markets bringing it here to this product case if i'm sticking on any product by the time i click on uh, my apply before okay i should be expecting to see just this first product so that's what it does now um for wheel card i don't even anyone have anything to say concerning wheel card when you hear the word wheel card what do you think it means okay in order not to waste our time the wheel card filter is also another important one because um, it looks at um, some advanced aspects which when we talk about patterns. So if I'm clicking on wheel card now, you can see where we have contains, starts with, anything starts with, ends with. It's a pattern because um, if we are saying we want to filter out certain data that starts with letter A, that's a pattern. That's the very basic foundation on understanding patterns when it comes to um, data analytics, data science, and all of that. It means that we want to follow, we want Tableau to um, fit our data for us based on, you know, we we'll now come, not just saying, um, okay, if we leave it uncontained, that means going to pick out just those information here or data here that contains A, meaning any data that have A is not going to work here. That's just what it means. It's not going to be selected as part of the sample and all of that, population and all of that. If we are using end suites, exactly matches, we know exactly matches means it must be exactly this. For example, 
we can say a for apple meaning um, um termed apple over here then we can also go with that so whenever you hear the word with card we use it to filter based on patterns or exact matches with or in our data so it's very very important it must it, in short it deals with what we call um data formats because that means whatever we are filtering through this um, um very well card filter um, uh, method must follow a particular word format you can also um, come down here to say oh i want to include all values when empty and all of that are for you to do that for example uh, for example now we have we already know that we have a what we are working on here is product analysis now let's say in this product analysis we have product containing you can see three d systems you can see um, um 3m polarizing you can see two three heavy duty you can see four zero zero nine highlighters now let's say um um you're told in your workplace please get us those items that contains the keyword like systems all the items that get us those items that contains the keyword capacity they are all here what you are to use the filtering method you're to use in tableau is the wheel card is the wheel card filter that will help you include all those products you know with names containing systems with names containing some we talked about capacity which i can see one i can see one there written 24 capacity maximum thereabout so it is the wheel card filter that will help you include all products with names containing those keywords so let's take note of that in order not to waste time you know be it in uh, um, data analyst interview and all of that so you know to run to to be able to do that then for the third type of filtering um, option here in tableau okay but it, i know this is not what we even want to look at we are looking at a practical scenario but we just got here just let me explain this thing so move on all right so we know, we know what condition means whenever we hear the word condition everyone are expected to understand that time also when um you have conditions like this okay what the filter actually does is that it helps you to filter data based on rules conditions are rules that's what it is in data analytics and the data science domain when you're conditioned they are just rules so you are asked to filter data based on a rule that's the question don't just waste your time come to filter condition hope we understand you're filtering data based on conditions based on rules it's just like setting criterias i don't to use those grammars most times but criterias is the same thing these are what you're to include in your analysis these are what you're to exclude from your analysis that becomes a rule there's a rule you must follow for example if we are looking at a, a case here let's say um um, okay, let me give you a scenario where you can use condition filter. For instance, in our data set here, if you check very well, you notice that we have customers. I've not really gone through the data. Um, contacted one of our staff who just forwarded this to me. So I believe that there is a particular uh, customer. So those of you who have gone through it, there should be customer section here. I don't know. But you can use condition filter to show only customers who made purchases above a particular amount. For instance, let's say um, your duty that very day, you're asked, show us or um, a management staff is telling you, please, can you send us those customers who have purchased over 5 million? That's a conditional statement. Show customers with purchases over 5 million. What you use is the condition filter in Tableau. Do we understand? Hello? Hello, sir. Are we together? All right. All right. So, so that's what you use. That's where condition filter comes in. So picture it now to any any particular um, case scenario. That's what it will help you achieve. Show students who are owing school fees of above five. Uh, 50,000 naira. That's it. Whatever you want. Show football clubs who have scored more than 50 goals this season. 
whatever that you notice a rule there is a kind of a rule pattern on it that's what it does then the last one here is the one we we'll use even in what we are doing here we can apply them and we don't have time to apply all these other ones now this one is called the top fitter top fitter now remember in our analysis in today's class we stated it saying that there are times you know when it comes to uh, 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 um, business analysis for instance you know there are times you might be needed business data analysis there are times you might be needed by a company that please um, help us evaluate and compare products based on metrics like sales you know and they are also now telling you please as you're doing this for us we want to see our best performing product we want to see our highest ranking product for instance the year is coming to an end and a lot of companies want to know they want to prepare for 2024 and all that what you use for such kind of analysis business analysis kind of which involves some such kind of evaluation that involves direct metrics and all comparisons is what we call the top filter the top filter is what you use why because as an analyst when you have such problem to handle first thing you need is to focus is to focus they want to know their best performing you need to focus on the best performing it is the work of the top fitter. The top fitter helps you to focus on the best performing. The best performing will be the highest. So it wants you, um, for you to do that, you have to come to the top fitter. That's where you come to do that. It's just like, um, let's say, you're, you're told, please send us a report on the top 50 um, products by sales. Or, please, in your visual, display it for us display the top best performing product what do you tell table you will come here use the top feature and tell table table please show me the top 50 product by sales or display for me the top performing product or best product by sales this is what you use it may be a bank that has targets or a company that has target like a real estate organization that have salespersons, you know, agents running here and there selling, you know, trying to see how um, to boost the company's land sales and all of that. You could use this top feature to highlight the top 20, you know, um, um, agents, land agents based on their sales performance, marketers based on their sales performance. So what I'm trying to say here is that all of these tableau features, um, filter features are very important because, of course, from what I've said so far, you agree with me that they all have um, um, what we could term different ways, different ways on which you can, you know, run around your data, whether you want to focus on specific aspect of it. You know, if I say, okay, this is how our assessment is to be. Of course, you all should know that before you receive your certificates, you will write our exam. It's very important. So our exam will ask you um, part of the questions, the um, sub, um, subjective questions, which will be at your home. Use your system to, to go through that. When it will be monitored we'll be asking you questions like um, um when you want to focus on specific categories in a data set which type of filter do you use in table so if i'm asking um okay mrs um, ugoma can you hear me ma hello when you want here, to focus on specific categories in your data set which type of filter option do you use in table Wildcard. Wildcard. When you want to focus on specific categories, wildcard. Okay. Root, is that correct? Is it wildcard? I'll go with that, sir. Okay. All right. I'll go with that, sir. Okay. 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 Now, when you want to apply patterns, Sir Gabriel, sir, when you want to apply patterns, Sir Gabriel, when you want to apply patterns, is no more here. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Vivian, when you want to apply patterns, which of the when you want to apply, which of the filter option do you use, Mrs. Vivian? I think it should be the wide the wide card. When you want to apply patterns, to apply patterns. Okay, okay, okay. You all are correct. You all are, you all are correct. correct. Okay. And um, let me check. Um, Sir, detail. 
So data here, when you want to, when you want to set conditions using table filter, which option do you use in your data set? We want to filter by setting conditions. So I know those who are in class. Oh, Sa is not um, with us. Okay. Uh, Miss Benedicta, are you there, man? When you want to set conditions, Sa Paul, I believe everyone are here. Sa Shara, I believe everyone are here. So please, these are things you should please. When you want to focus on specific areas, when you want to apply patterns, you want to set conditions, you want to highlight. Uh, we talked about the best performing and all of that. So we should know that filters make it easy for us to tailor our visualization to the exact information we are interested in exploring. This summed up is data exploration. These are techniques that expedite your workflow in that very aspect. So I, I, I believe we are together. So for this analysis we are doing, the next thing we are going to do here, we will come to this top. You can all see this top where we have top. Now when you come to this top, come down. You will see none. You will see by field. We are going to use by field. We are not doing anything formula here. So we are going to choose this option called by field. I told you what field means. Field means columns. So when you hear by field, it means by columns. It's now looking at each of these as a single or individual columns. So now, we will then come here. If you look inside this box, you're seeing where we have top. You're seeing where we have bottom. Now, if you look inside here, you see top. Now, if we come here, you can now come inside here and then put, um, let's say, whatever you want to put. Okay. So, let's say we're told that what are their um, best performing um, um, what are their best performing or highest ranking top 15 items this is where you come and change it to 15 once you have done that you then scroll up apply is what you click before you then click ok if you look in here immediately you did that filtering you notice that it immediately it provides that very information you requested for because you have just sent a message to table telling table table please show me the top or the highest ranking or the best performing 15 items by sales table did that for you showing you those items and i've told you how to how you can go and sort either in um, ascending order descending order you can also be able to do that here I'm clicking here, I'll be able to do that. I'll be able to do that. I believe everyone can still see my screen. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. But will you keep doing it like this? If they are not asking you how about the top five, will you is it good? You now go back here again, right click on product name, come to edit filter, come to top. You change top 15 to 5. You come and click on apply. Click on OK. It gives you the top 5. No. This, this, this may be OK to you. But to me, there's no flexibility here. The flexibility here is, is, is a hard one. Because I am not able to easily switch between, you know, the different views here. Or scenarios. Okay. So that's where parameters comes in to play a good role for you. So as an analyst who have now seen the different aspects, you then apply what we call parameter that we're doing in that last class. So what do you do? You have to create a parameter. And that's why I was saying it. The parameters are like user-defined um, um, columns, user-defined inputs that will allow you to control the way your visualization, your analysis works. It's just like settings. You can now adjust it to explore your data in a more interactive way. For instance, let's try something. What we will do now is to come to products, the product name, which we are working on product. So we'll come to product name under the tables area here, under the tables, under data section. We'll right click on product name. We'll come down. We'll see this option called create. We'll then move and click on create. What are we creating? 
we are creating parameter. Then when we come to calculated field, we'll round up with that one. Parameter. I take it again. Because we want to ensure, because that's that's the standard. That's the global standard. Your work must you know, um, show that flexibility. You need to see how, you know, um, 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 even how your parameter gets to affect your visualization. We'll see that. Now, I said, how do you go about this? Come to product name, the name of the product. Yeah, that's the column. Right click, it brings this list of options. Move to create, then switch to the other side. Choose parameter. Someone wants to join. Let me let the person in. When you click on parameter, you notice what? It brought a window. Abi, is this a window or a screen? Oh, a box. It brought a box. Sorry. Box named create parameter. This is where you, your first task is to clean this name unless you want to leave it like this. Product name parameter. But I don't see why it should be. If they are telling you the best performing, then your name should, you know, it, it, it calls for consistency. You must be, you must maintain consistency across your dashboards. Very important. Even for your parameter across multiple sheets, you must maintain consistency. So that means right here, to first of all maintain it, I will give it a name. That will be consistent with whatever I'm doing here. So I can call this highest ranking. Highest ranking um, or best performing could be good. We could say best performing. Best performing products. So once I've done that, come down. Properties, nothing is there. Move to data type. Now where you are seeing data type, change it to integer. Why? Do you know we have different data types? Hello? Hello? Okay. I believe everyone remember what data type is. Yes. Sir. yes. Okay, you can see table. You can see the different data types that are in table: the floats, the integer, the string, the one we call the boolean, the date, date, time. Good. You all said yes. Good. I think I heard two voices that are familiar. Roots. What do we mean by boolean data type? Hello, Mrs. Tessie, the two people that said yes, what is Boolean data type? What is float data type? But well, we didn't do Boolean and uh, float under SQL, so I don't know. Okay, Mrs. Okay, Mrs. Uh, Vivian also Vivian added. Also added. Is that so? That's so. Do bowling. Yeah, we, did, do bowling. we didn't mention anything like uh, bowling and floats. I think what we mentioned then was uh, VACA, VACA, integer, date and time, decimal. I think so. so. Hello. 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 I'm with you, sir. This is interesting. Hello. I'm with you, sir. Hello? Hello? Yeah. I'm with you, yeah, sir. When you talk about float, float is how to do decimal. And float is a data type that has to do with decimals, decimal numbers. Mm -hmm. And Boolean, Boolean is a data that the response is either true or false. Is either true or false? That's a Boolean data type. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Can you write down, sir, with string? Sir, yeah. I said, can you write on with string? A school is a text. It's for text. Text. It's a text. Mm -hmm. There's a data type. For text. Okay. Very, very good. Very correct. Very correct. You have a data set given to you, or if someone sends you a work. You're not seeing question like, they're asking you question like, let me use my notepad. Because I think when I use my notepad, we don't forget this. I don't know. I thought I've said something like this before in one of our classes. Anytime you have any data set that is um, giving you something like, maybe they're asking you, is it raining? Is it raining? A question. You're now seeing true slash false. Just like Sir Detail said, this is an example of a boolean data type a boolean data type maybe someone is asking you is the light turned on through slash force that example of a boolean data type if we bring it to the context of what we are doing our work does not consign rain. It does not consign light. What consigns here is if they are asking you something like, we have a list of customers that purchase this product, I believe, in the data set. They are now asking you, has the customer made a purchase? True or false? All these are decisions. They are conditions. Okay. This is it raining is what we call a yes or no kind of question. It's either true or false or yes or no. This um, is the light turned on. When it comes to analysis, we refer to it as a true slash false statement. We could have logical conditions like maybe you work in a hospital and they are saying, is the malaria level above or the blood, is the blood... Um, what is this blood this thing? Is it blood level I be what? Is it above 50 or 100? That's a logical condition where bullying is involved. They're not asking you, maybe it's an organization that is interested in knowing the number of visitors they have in their website. They are not asking you something like, is the number of our website visitors greater than 1000 this is a comparison result because they want you to compare between the current visitors and 1000 when it comes to programming and data science analysis bullying is a very fundamental aspect very fundamental data type aspect because there is no way you'll be working with conditions or you want to make decisions in your analysis without using them in excel we use them those true or false we are using in each statement they are boolean data type in fact do you know that they also serve as a building block Yes, when we use each statement in Excel, what are we doing? We are doing, dealing with logical expressions. Remember, those of you that did Excel. Why? Because we, we are looking at how do we help to control the flow of what we are working on? Or how do we filter data based on specific criteria? All those things featuring are logical expressions. The Boolean data type serves as the building block for logical expressions so please let us not forget some of these things he has mentioned floats and others so we'll just stop let us proceed with what we are doing i don't know are we together please hello yes we are together 
If there is anything you should not forget about this bullying, a sharp student will know that bullying is a data type that has only two values. Bullying can never have three values. It must be true or false or yes or no. It must be two, two, two. That's one thing about it. It has only two possible values, true or false or whatever. So you must know that when it comes to these aspects, conditions is bullying. That data that you'll be using true or false, whatever, the data type is bullying. So let's flow now. But in this scenario now, because of what we have here, and numbers, whole numbers, we will use integer. So I believe nobody will say they don't know integer. So we'll change our data type to integer. Whole numbers. If you look at this number, there is no decimal. Low. Those of us that did mathematics know mathematics is a requirement for those learning data analysis. No fraction is here too. It's just like something that shows up in full, nothing like parts. That's why we are using integer. It could be positive numbers, no problem. If you have negative numbers too, no problem. Maybe something like, because of course in mathematics, we have positive integers. 1, 2, 100, 500. The same way we have negative integers. Minus 1, minus 100, minus 500. We can even have 0. All those things are integers. You have a party. You're told that some guests are coming. This is a scenario now. You have some guests who are coming for that party. Sorry, I want to let someone in. And you're interested. Why don't I count the number of guests who are coming for this my party? End of year party. Or maybe you called a caterer. Please do cupcakes for my guests that are coming and you say why don't i count the cupcakes that will be that I have been you know kept on each of the tables when you have counted it one two three all those counts you did are integer data types they're integer data types and there are scenarios they are needed i'll give you one they are needed when you're working with quantities so if you're an analyst you're given a data set that involves quantities or could be something that are complete and don't need to be expressed in fractions. It means that those data are reliable. For a data, numeric data that doesn't involve fractions, is reliable. You don't need the points, blah, 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 or whatever. It's reliable. Those are integers. That's why we are now coming here to say, for that reason, since this is full, let us use what? Integer. Do we understand? Now that we have changed it to integer, we will then scroll up. When we come down here, you will see we have display format 1. Leave it. Value when workbook opens. Current value. Of course, the current value should be what should be displayed. If we are saying um, best 100, best 1000 best 15 no problem come down to where we have allowable values remember this organization have told you what they need they have told you that they want to see their best five products by sales their best 10 product by sales their best 20 product by sales what do you do as an analyst you will now come to where we have allowable values choose list don't choose all we're not allowing all if you do all it will just be all your field Alright, so can you all hear me? Welcome back. Can anyone hear me? Hello? I'm with you. I'm with you. Can I hear you, sir? Okay, ma'am. Alright, so let's move fast because of time. So allowable values, we will not use all. Come to where we have list. List. Someone wants to join. Now, when you come down, where we have, you can see it's divided into two. We have value, we have display as. Value is where you put 
the requirements they want you to show them the best performing 10 the best performing 10 the best performing 10 someone wants to join so the when you come in here you put 10 they say the best 15 you put 15 you come in here you put 20 display as we cannot leave it as 10 15 20 so we can edit it double click inside put best 10 products we can copy these products come here put best 15 products paste the product this one put best 20 products very good you can have those requirements being stated we now have the requirements as 10 15 20 and best 10 products best 15 products best 20 products once you're done go through it what you've done so you avoid mistake best performing not that you cannot edit it or you can always edit it but still go through that's what i do then come down and click OK. You can see we have. Once I said check your work, name best performing product. You can now say best performing product, comma, 10, 15, 20. Current value will be best 10 products. Data type, we have said why, why we are using it. So, let me let them in. You know, the more they are here, the more the class will be. Here. All right, so come down once you have entered list the requirement 10, 15, 20. Display as best 10 product, best 15 product, best 20 product. Come down and click on what? Okay. Now, if you can, you all look towards my left below here. Can you see we have something written called parameters? Under it, we now have best performing products. Can you all see that? Below, yeah. That's what we just created. Hello. Yes, sir. I'm with you. Okay. Now, go back to the row you will see here we have product name click on the filter button this list will appear this time around it's not filter it's not telling us edit filter why because we have already created a filter before so what do we do here we'll click on edit filter once we do that it now brings us back here go to leave don't go to general filter don't go to wicker don't go to condition move to top filter when you get to top fit, you see where we have this by field. By field. By field is showing us five. You have to change it. Click on the drop down here. Click on the drop down. Change it and choose best performing product. Remember that parameter we have created. You have to come and link your filter to that parameter. I talked about flexibility. I talked about the need for consistency. I also remember talking about, um, what did I also mention? Interactivity. If you don't do this, you'll not be able to interact. That interactivity, that the, the flow, connection will not be there. You need to be able to explore and analyze your data anytime you want. So you have to come back to that filter we did before. And then do what? Come and link it. When you come here, you click by field on top filter. When you click on the drop down, you should see that best performing product parameter you create. If you don't see it, it means you have not created it. You now use create a new parameter. But we have. That's why it's here. So I will now link it. Now, the moment I do this, 
I don't have to do any other thing. Of course, it's sales. It's sales I want. All these are the columns in that data set. You can see all of them. Even including another table data. Some is the sum of it. If it's not the sum, the maximum, you can use it here. We'll leave it like this. Come down and click apply. After applying, come and click OK. Not OK before apply. It's apply before OK. Once you have done this, ladies and gentlemen, you will now see the power of parameter. Let me let someone that wants to join in. Which you will now have to go to your parameter because now you don't have to, you know, answer this company's problem for them, solution to them with feta again you use parameter what we have set 15 10 all those things we call them threshold you have set up a threshold what you now need to do is to come and adjust this parameter to see how those threshold which are 10 15 20 are going to do what affects your visualization how you come to your parameter right click on it you will see list of options will appear click this first one or this second one not add to sheet this second one called show parameter i take it again because you have linked it come to your parameter right click on it choose show parameter when you did show parameter do you notice on that show me section we now have what we call best performing can you all see best performing by my right hand side on the screen? Hello. Hope you can see best performing appear. Yes, sir. Good. Now, yeah. if you click on the drop down, you will see those threshold you set. Best 10 products, best 15 products, best 20 products. These are thresholds. Please look at it. We are the ones that set up these sales thresholds. I don't know if the grammar threshold is big or because of we have uh, some students that are fully beginners. When we say fully beginners, I need to be breaking down some things. Yes. So the grammar is not big. Are you sure? It's okay. you no, know, I love using story. For instance, let's go to party. To you, it's not big. I know people that DM me. Now, for this reason, I'll be using story each time. You have a party you're organizing this festive season. And I want you to look at threshold from that angle. You decided that um, there are some guests you want to pay attention to. So you decided to come up with a particular rule that will help you, you know, to know which guest should I pay extra attention to? Maybe the rule you came up with is all the guests that put on Agbada. That Agbada becomes a threshold. It is now the rule. That means anyone with Agbada, you will pay extra attention to the, that particular guest. That's threshold. So when it comes to data analytics, it is what we call a decision point or a limit. You know, in SQL, we have limit operator. Saloki is here and others. Those are threshold. Here's my notepad. Because I want you to understand this thing very well. Threshold. Limits. Decision points in analytics. Why? because it helps you focus you need focus it helps you focus what is important what is not important at that point these are what helps you threshold you are here with us you see to analyze sales data for this business 
and we have just set up sorry someone wants to join we have just set up um that's sir francis welcome sir we have just set up a threshold for these product sales that we only want the company they only want the best 10 product best 15 best 20. what we have just told tableau do you know what we have told tableau we have just like draw the line telling tableau tableau i want to pay attention to the top 10 products that made the highest sales what do we do we'll come to the right and choose best 10 products this is it count it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten tableau i want to pay attention to the best 15 products with higher sales i'll come and choose 15. i'll just come to my parameter here click on the drop and choose 15. did it increase or it did not increase count it one two three four that's five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen you can now see that samsung galaxy is part of it and others apple iphone 5 is part tableau i want to pay attention to the top or the best 20 products that made significant sales i will come to my hello sir i'm with you sir is this in any way working like um slicer in excel yes it is this also we can even do this as a slide do you understand yes sir it's doing that also sir is doing that it also works like this in power bi too but not in this not template. in this method yeah right? in, not in this template but it works like this is a power bi too not in this template like how can you make me to understand uh for it's just that this this frame is different when i mean frame the layout is different but it's the same Mm, this grammar, this Slicer grammar does. layout, this grammar layout. What's the layout? <laughs> <laughs> you say frame, now you say layout. No, I know why now. Hello, Ruth, can you hear me? Visualization, I don't what I'm just. Uh, which of them is it? This one, you know, this is like a table visual. We can change it now. Go to show me at the top. Choose a a, a visual I want to use. It's not stopping you. Do you get? Is it what you're called? Is, yes. is this what you're saying? You can use the pie. You can use yes. This one. Uh -huh. Then I told you if you're using this one because you want it to, you now click show me again to take it away. Then the bars are important. The label rather. Here you come to label. When you come here, click show mark labels to now show you the amount. Can you see it? And I told you you can come to color and then change the color. You can even click, you know, to change the color, even border lines, you can do it, depending on how you want to do it. I love pink code. You understand? So, this way, we now know the best 10 products. We can even come here and say the best 15 products. It gives it to us. This one's are scattered, I've told you. You can come to the top here. Come here, right click on that thing. Sort ascending. So I can sort it for you from I uh, was doing this now. Why is this thing trying to form my hand here? <coughs> Let me see this. Sorts. Data source order. Alphabetically field. Manual. Let's see. No, no, no. Let's use mm, data source order of field. I'm coming. Sales. Yeah, by sales is better. So you can see what I did. I use fields, that's colon, each of them. Then, field name is sales, aggregation by sum. That's what I did. So if I want from highest to lowest, like this. Good. So we can now see the item with the highest down, like this. Are we together? This becomes best 15. You want best 20, you click. For the company you show them best 20 products this is it 
I don't know. Does this make sense in any way? These are the thresholds. Yes, sir. These are the thresholds. Yes, sir. So what I want you to know is that in data analytics, please don't ever forget, what this does is that it helps you pinpoint what we call data points. Remember data points in last class? You have data points you need to meet certain criteria. This is a criteria. These thresholds are criteria. They have just told you, give us 10 only, 15 only, 20 only. You now come to pinpoint and use your data points to see how you can meet these criteria. You know, it's just a way of saying, let us focus on what really matters or stands out in our data. This was what matters or stood out in the data for this company. And that's why we have it here. Hope we understood this. We are going to take calculated field now. After calculated field, I believe with this you understand parameter. After calculated field, we call it a day. In our next class, we'll move to sets, a particular aspect on sets, then we'll move to the next agenda on our curriculum. Some person sent message, if we are going to have break this festive period, we are not having any we're not having any break. We are going to learn till we enter January. I believe some companies have closed. Unless anyone that wants to travel, you just try and also sacrifice it so we can finish up our courses. Are we good with that? I wanted us to also discuss on that. Hello, hello, Sas. Perfect. Do you Perfect. All, uh, it's okay, right? Okay. It's okay. okay. It's okay so that we use this. Uh, yes. From next week, sir. From next week, sir. Next week, we may use every day because I think some companies so everybody at home. You still have five months to enter. All right. That's for this one. Now, let's look at um, a connection with calculated fields. And this is where um, we also need to do something too. Now, remember, this was for best. Sometimes, company can tell you, please, can you also do, um, they can tell you, please, can we you also do, this one I will practicalize it here. They are now telling you, please, can you also do poor for us, least performing or lowest? So who can tell us, please, what do we do? Based on what we have done, Saloki, what do we do? We want to also do for, this is for best. So based on what we have done, I don't know who started class with us. Maybe Saloki just joined. Let, how do we go about doing for, for the least? the lowest ranking please somebody should tell us let's do it hello sir okay man i'm with you okay man i'm with you i think uh we'll click or we'll, we are going to right click on the product name then we move to create okay, and, and select uh, create. And okay create okay create then we we'll move to parameters okay and there, there. So then we change the product name to list of um, maybe poor sales or something. We just change the product name parameter to we'll give it a name. So this one, so poor, this one poor sales. Yes. Okay. Okay. Data type. Then we'll select data type. Data type. The data type is integer. Okay. Okay. Then the. I like. Okay. I am. I like. Okay. I am. We know. I don't think we did it. We know. I don't think we did it. How about these allowable values? How about these values? The allowable value. Yeah. Wow. Take that. Uh, I don't know. So, uh, okay. 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 So, uh, okay. so, so my of tried. So, so my of tried. to value. Up. Normally, yeah, we will not put if they are show us the the lowest ranking items like the least performing let's say the least 10 the least 15 the least 20 this way you now put 15 if you remember you now change this name to display as 
least 15 or lowest 15 oh you understand here you now move put 10 just like that for this a long method because we have already created this one please let everyone follow up because we have already done for this this thing you now need to do should just take you just one minute you should do for lowest what do you do come to this parameter by my left that we have created right click on it and choose duplicate do we all understand duplicate means to like create another one from what we have done so we'll come back to the parameter here right click on the list of options we choose duplicate when we choose duplicate you now see that we have two now we can see now that we have two there is one that carry copy you can expand this thing like this you see this one that carry copy that's the one you will edit right click on it choose from the list choose edit clean copy from it you can see that it brings you back here man you can see the same uh -huh. so you come here clean this copy you can now change this title here from best we can say um lowest or least think the opposite of i don't know whether worst performing okay and say worst performing product like 10 15 20 that's all we'll just do we'll come down to this one here display as we'll change best to worst copy this worst we'll also change best here to worst we'll also change best here to worst that's all so once we have done this we'll then come here and click okay i don't know if anyone can still hear me we can hear you now that we have done worst you can now see we have best and worst good now you will now go back to that product name on row chef and edit it edit that feature click on that feature icon because is that feature we link up before to best performing so we also need to link it again to worst performing otherwise there will not be any connection and interactivity so we'll now go back to the row chef on this product name button we'll click on the feature icon We'll then come down and choose edit filter that's the only way you can go and change it edit filter now once you click on edit filter go to top filter by field this way you now come and link another linking don't worry the first one have already been linked you will now come to this by field if you have created that uh, parameter successfully when you come to by field where we have top you can change it to bottom then come to best performing you should see worst there you can see my own worst is there select worst meaning we are now analyzing this to show us the bottom which is the worst performing item by sales and i told you if there's any other metrics maybe by profit you use profit that's metrics some whatever way they say it maybe they want the average the count whatever we say some that's all you're just going to do then you come and click on what apply before you then click on what okay you can see now now once you have done this once you have done this what you then do is this if you look towards the right we are still having best performing there worst performing is not there so what do you do come to the worst performing on that parameter by your left right click on it and click show parameter. i'll take it again we have edited the feature but on the right on that show me we are having best performing we are supposed to have worst there also what do you do come to your left you will see we have worst performing right click on it click show parameter 
if you now click show parameter and go back to that show me section can you see what's now hello you're seeing what's now there is what's there now don't do a mistake of analyzing two at the same time you will get wrong results don't do a mistake of analyzing two at the same time you'll get wrong results take one after the other if you're not focusing on worst come here to best click on it choose hide hide you're not hiding it we say hide we have made it hidden now we cannot present this they are asking us what's the worst 10 products we'll come here click on it and choose worst 10 products this becomes the worst 10 out of all the products this company sold if they are saying what's the worst 20 come here choose worst 20. if they are saying what's the worst 15 come here choose worst 15 and see all the worst 15 from Eru Euroka to grip and all of that Saloki so talks about slicer you can turn this to a slider how click on this drop down on the worst performing the button top here can you see slider if you don't want list you can say slider so can you slide here now to slide this one is the, the first is 10 worst 10 you just use this slide if you go to middle that's 15 if you use this button and also go like this that's 20. you can also use type in if you don't like that method come down click on what type in if you open this now you can type this was 20 if i want was 10 i will type was 10 enter if i want was 20 or 15 i will say was i will type was after clicking inside was 15 product enter so whichever method you know will be good for you during the uh, visualization presentation and all of that if it's a typing maybe you did from worst one to in case they say what of the worst one that way now you know what to do things like that is to come here edit and put edit fit and uh, parameter it opens so we should have another value called one then yeah we'll call this one worst one you know some companies may some organization may want to know you know broke down like that this will become worst one then we'll say okay so let's check worst one can you see the worst one product is eureka disposable that's the worst product the worst the first worst product you know, the worst and i told you you can change it again click on that drop and change it to slider so that means one will be the first and um, 10 rather followed by 15 followed by 20 and followed by one you can also change it back to how it was before what we call compact list to now select do you want the worst one you show them are they asking for the worst 20 you show them are they asking for the worst 15 you show them are they asking for the worst 10 you show them this is parameter that we have just used time will not allow us to look at calculated feed you know, there's another good thing i wanted to show us but we'll continue that one in our next class so i don't know do you have any question on this Can you all hear me or we are disconnected? I hear you. Okay. We can hear you. Okay, okay, we are syncing it. <laughs> okay, I understand. Or should we still continue? No. Okay. No, sir. No. Yes.
So, I believe we understand this. Yes, with practice, mm -hmm. we can do better. Yes, with practice. So, practice it with that data set, because it's nice. Like I told you, you can now go to show me. You can now change it to any anyone you want to use, like this one now. You can see for the, these are the words too. We can see each of them. I told you label now. If you want to put, how much did they generate for they to be the worst? Come to label. Show mark labels. Okay, come to and see them here. Let's go to this label. So you can see the amounts they generated. Why my own question not? Responding. Sorry, Ma, you said what? I'm trying to do this uh, parameter to show um, drop down the way you are seeing. But it's always telling me to Okay, the parameter to show drop down is not doing, is not showing. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Too. Just keep trying it anyway. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, this is where we're going to be rounding up tonight. Yeah, so I will okay. to take home some key points we have done. Things about data points so far. We talked about um, data types, rather. Data types, the bullying and all of that. We look into the integer data type, the boolean, you know. And I told you the integer always shows up in complete form. Just like counting guests at your party or cupcakes on the table. We talked about um, boolean, you know, statements, logical expressions, yes, no, true, false. I also remember we talking about um, threshold. Which I said threshold are important. All what we are doing here, we are working based on thresholds. We are asked to the worst 10 products, 15, the worst 20. So if we want a best now, we'll go to best, right click, and say show. You can see it. Then we'll now hide the worst. We'll click on it and say hide. You can now see best. If we want best 10, we'll now choose best 10. You get if we want best 15, best 15. If we want best 20, you can also do that. So we can also hide this. We can now bring back our worst performing also, show parameter. We can also do the adjustment worst one. We can see the worst one. So all this we are doing them based on the So don't forget that in data analytics, thresholds guides us to pay attention to information that meets the criteria we have. So as we round up in tonight's session, let's remember these key points, data types. Let's remember thresholds. They are the decision points that guide our focus. Let's not forget the main thing, parameter. Thank you everyone for joining tonight's session. We'll call it a day. Good night. I don't know if you all can see me. Good night.